Who are you? What are you doing here? No, of course I know why you're here. We're playing Resident Evil 2. We're continuing on with Claire. Claire A. Oh, there's a locker. We can't open that. A special kind of key is required, and we don't have any kind of key like that. Maybe someday we will, but not right now. What are we thinking about trying to open lockers anyway? To get new clothes. It's the least of our worries right now. We're trying to get out of this police station, which is full of zombies and dead people. Un uh, Leon said it would be safe here. He was wrong and also still missing. Here is a statue. It is holding a red gem. Something's written on it. The God of Sun and the God of Moon, their gaze upon me is the only thing that can release red soul. So, like I said last time, the police station is, uh, eccentric. Got this statue holding the red gem. Got these other statues next to it. And pressure plates on either side of the statue setup. and a plate which gives you a clue as to what you might do with these statues. Fortunately, none of the police accidentally moved these statues. They, no one thought, hey, those squares on the floor, those look like they would be good places for these, these smaller statues. No one did that, which is good, because if they did, then we wouldn't, the red gem would not be here for us right now. We would have problems. There we go. Very elaborate setup. It looks like a stone statue, but I guess its hand must be articulated since it was able to drop that. It's a red gem, about the size of a fist. Don't know how valuable that would be. We don't know what it's made of. We're not going to sell it for anything anyway. No merchants in Resident Evil 2. This is not Resident Evil 4. There is no one who is interested in what we're buying. But we found the Star's office. Claire, her storyline is that she's looking for her brother, Chris. Chris is a member of Star's. This is the office of Star's. Various devices. This is where they gathered the information. Hmm. A grenade launcher. This is where they fired the grenades. Let's take a look at that. So Star's is the special unit of the Raccoon Police. They, um... Uh, they have the heavy weapons. They're the ones who go in and fight zombies. Even though they were take they didn't know zombies existed in the first game, which makes me wonder what was the purpose of stars before zombies. Nothing useful about this. There's a bag with the red cross on it hanging from the wall. That might give you an indication as to whose desk this is. This would be Rebecca's Rebecca Chambers from the first game picture of a young man. There's a good chance it's her boyfriend. So, blue beret on this desk, this would be Jill's. That br uh, brown leather jacket on the wall, I believe, was Chris's jacket from his alternate costume in RE1, I think. So this would be Chris's desk. And Chris's diary. Let's read it. August 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-Virus research in that mansion. Any anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up in that explosion, along with any incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one is willing to talk about the incident. It looks like I'm running out of options. August 17th. We've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. August 24th. With the help of Jill and Barry, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research on the new G-Virus, a variation of the original T-Virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? We talked it over, and have decided to fly to the main Umbrella HQ in Europe. I won't tell my sister about this trip, because doing so would put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. Hopefully, she won't come to this city, which is uh, being infested with monsters. She has no reason to do that. So everything's gonna be okay. Alright, the Chris's diary has been filed. So, Claire's quest kind of comes to uh, an abrupt end. Yeah, we'll take the unicorn medal.
She came to, to Raccoon City to find Chris. Chris is not here. We found his desk. He went off to Europe, did not tell Claire he was doing this, because it was going to put her in danger. She is in danger anyway. Probably would have been better just to share that information, Chris. Something is engraved on the back. Please guide me to the beautiful maiden who turned into stone as she waited for me. Well, there is a statue in the lobby that said that she's waiting for the unicorn, and Chris had it. Some bullets. A replica of a gun. The owner is probably a member of the NRA. This would be, would be Barry's desk, who enjoys his very large gun. It's his thing. It's trashed. Someone must have searched the desk. So this would be Wesker's desk, and I assume that the other STARS members searched it after they came back from the mansion in RE1, and they were, like, real mad at Wesker, saying, what's, what's, what's this business? What's going on? They look for files. I don't know if they found anything of use. There's something over here. Picture of the STARS members. There they are. You can see Chris in the lower center. Jill to our right, his left. Uh, Wesker would be, of course, the only one with sunglasses. Barry is to his left, our right. Um, is Re Rebecca's not in that picture, is she? I don't see her. I don't see her there. But there are 11 members there, and counting Rebecca, that would make 12 for stars. So, you know, continuity error? This office is entirely too small for 12 members. Because it had to fit both the Alpha and Bravo teams. Mm -hmm. It had both of them. They couldn't have possibly fit in here. Rather, the only people here are the survivors from RE1. Though, um... Correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a very long time since I played RE1. There's no ending in which Jill, Chris, Barry, and Rebecca all make it out, is there? Like, there are different variations of that, but I don't, I don't remember an ending where all four of them actually get out, but... It seems to be saying here that they all four of them did. So none of the endings in RE1 are canon, I suppose. Various trophies. One of them reads, Marksman Contest winner. Chris, Chris beat Barry. And Barry is the gun lover. But Chris is the sharpshooter, I guess. Well, nothing else here for us. Better leave. There's something I find funny about the idea that the phone lines are apparently still working. Can we call someone? Apparently not, but someone did send us a fax. Federal Police Department Internal Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield, Raccoon City Police Department STARS Division. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the in following information. 1. Regarding the G-Virus currently under development by Umbrella Inc. So far, it is unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. 2. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds and bribes from Umbrella Inc. over the last five years. He was apparently involved in the cover-up of the Mansion Lab case, along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons had been arrested under suspicion of rape on two separate counts during his years as a university student. He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence, as well as his phenomenal academic standing. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton, Section Chief, Internal Investigations, United States Federal Police Department. Okay, Chris decided that his boss needed to be investigated by the feds. Well, Chris is not going to get this fax, but uh, I guess we should just keep that in mind. We have this metal. Well, there was a place where we could put the metal. All right, so Chief Irons, chief of the police, an accused rapist. Uh, but he was really good in school, so he, you know how it is. Oh. Very, that didn't happen the first time we went through here. Oh. 
So, you know, it is kind of startling. You go through this the first time and you think it's safe, and then you go through it again, and then that happens. You know, that's not bad. Oh. Got big liquor here. But I have my big gun. See, so I got my grenade launcher. There we go. Uh, I have my red gem. Let me just put that away for right now because I'm not going to use this red gem immediately. Also put that uh, ink ribbon away. I'll hold on to the grenade launcher for right now. Don't want to waste it on zombies, but good for liquors. Anyway, here's the statue. Everyone who comes into the, into the police department wonders what what is this supposed to mean? But very few people find out. It means the statue is on a movable device that just launches a key out of it. That is very expensive, I would assume, to like have that on some sort of motor, some sort of powered motor device which moves the statue. Anyway, we have a key. We can check it. It's in the shape of a spade. Becomes the spade key. All right. Four keys. Spade, club, diamond hearts. You probably could figure that out. Anyway, we have the spade key right now. We did pass a door that had a spade lock. It was the hallway that the liquor was in. No, this was the hallway that the liquor is in. It was the next hallway. Next hallway. No, actually, it was that hallway. Getting ahead of myself. It was this hallway. Because there was this door, and it was locked. But now it is not. So I mentioned that in the original mode, in the Source Next version, there's no hidden items. Like, in the US version of the PlayStation game, you could, like, search, like, right here. Oh! Okay, never mind. There was an item here. Was I wrong? I thought that these invisible items didn't exist in original mode in this game. Visual materials. I might have, so I might have been wrong about that, but I did try some other locations that I know had items in the US version of the game, and there was nothing there, so I'm not sure. Here's a patrol report. Patrol report, September 20th, 9.30 p.m. Reporter Sergeant Neil Carlson. We received a report of a suspicious individual skulking around the sewers in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4 plastic explosive, an electronic detonator, uh, 9, 9x19 parabellum rounds, infrared scope, broken. Okay, this wasn't a monster. It was just someone carrying a bomb. So yeah, I guess suspicious individual would be accurate. It wasn't just a case of someone saying, hey, who's that over there and it's a monster. No, it was actually like a person with weapons. Here's a crank. We can look at the crank. It's square shaped. Square crank. No point in calling it that, though. In Resident Evil 1, there was the square, cr square crank and the hex crank. But in this game, there's only one crank. And that's square. I don't think there are other files. Fi yeah, no nothing's useful. What there is, however, is a business center. We are not bothering with that. I'm sure Claire could use the copy machine just fine. Uh, we need to find somewhere else that uses the, the spade key. And let's keep going. The load times in the original version do add some atmosphere to the game, like when you go through doors and such, or where you walk upstairs, but after you've played it a whole bunch of times, it is nice to be able to just skip all that. Oh, by the way, we're not able to go through this door. Knob turns, door won't budge. Sealed from the other side. Okay. That will never open. I think we can go through this ways now. Little girl's in trouble. 
Uh, I'm not going to use my grenades on that zombie. Let's use our gun. Uh. Well, as we saw in the manual, the little girl is Sherry Bergen. She is the girl whose parents are too busy to pay attention to her. Where'd she go? Well, this door is locked, but I do like the little detail of, like, there's, like, a little vent here, a little register. Adult could never get in here, so she took this off the wall and crawled through. I like that they paid attention to that little detail. Let's unlock this door. Key is useless. Let's get rid of it. Leon! Claire, you made it! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. It might help if you, the master of radios, took it with you. I don't I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. All right, so Leon came down from here. The girl ran up here. And, like, there's, like, a... She went... I guess she crawled under this door. I assume that's where she went. But we can't do anything now. Oh, let me reload. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in here. We can't use the vending machine. Let's unlock it. There are flame rounds for a grenade launcher in that drawer. Seems insecure. I don't know. I guess the raccoon police know what they're doing. The funny thing is there actually is a story reason for that kind of thing. I guess we'll, we'll encounter it, I don't know, pretty soon, but at some point. There's a switch. Can I move it? I cannot needs to be powered on. It is not powered on. So it has... Police station has this fancy library. Looks nice. Many books. On profiling investigations. Hmm. By an agent F.Y. Morgan. Well, we can't read that for right now. None of these books are useful. They're not going to get us out of here. You can't rely on books when you're in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. What are these books about? Chemistry? What does the Raccoon Police Department need to have a library about chemistry about? I'm gonna go... I'm gonna equip this. I'm gonna go through here. We don't need to go this way right now, but I just want to use my crank to free up space in my inventory. Here's a liquor. There we go. We're on the top floor now of the police station. It's like a little area here with a whole lot of gears. Not really sure what any of it does, but it doesn't work. But what I do know is that there's this thing over here. Square hole. What do you do with a square hole? Put a square crank in it. That's what you do. All right, now my squ my crank's gone because I'll never need to use it again. Freeing up a space in the inventory. We can't do anything up here for right now. We just needed to bring these stairs down for later. You know, I don't actually know what any of the gears do. Is this like a clock tower? Yeah, there's a bell. I guess it's a clock tower. There's this thing here. I can push the switch. Nothing happens. There's a piece missing. This plate seems to have been moved, but we can't move it ourselves. All right, so we just remember that. There's, like, this whole mess of gears, and something's missing from that. We'll come back later. It's very dangerous. It's very in unstable in the library, it seems. Now we're in this, like, little barricaded area. There's this thing. Bronze plate with a picture on it. Why, those look like those shelves that are right next to us. 
There's a power switch. Turn on the power. To power these fancy sl sliding shelves. It, it does, it's not enough to be able to have shelves to put your books on. You need shelves that can slide left and right. So we want to make the match that image that we saw of the shelves. There we go. It's not much of a puzzle, but it's there. That unveiled this. The Serpent Stone. Six inch stone with snake etched on the side. Well, I guess we'll just hold on to that for right now. As Claire wonders, why does this police station have all this stuff? Like, how much taxpayer money did all this cost? It seems extravagant. But then again, when you find out more about um, Raccoon City, you find out that... Oh, hold on. You find out that Raccoon, I'm sorry, Umbrella owns the entire city. So maybe we would assume that they're funding all this. That's why that the police station can be so magnificent. Because it is being funded by this huge uh, private corporation. But why would they pump so much money into the police station? Here's an emergency ladder. We'll push it down. So now we can get up here from the first floor. Yeah, why would why would Umbrella want to put so much money in the police station? Who does that benefit? Maybe someone uh, in charge of the police station is a fan of fine art and wants to have a, a magnificent palace full of art. Possibly. Another save room. Pick up this lighter, because we do need it right now. An oil lighter. Oh, did I look at this before? Fla uh, yeah, grenade flame rounds that we found just in a desk drawer. Uh, let's see. I'll put this away. Uh, probably the flame rounds as well. Did I pick up any other rounds? No, no. Oh, what else is in here? We got a magazine rack. None of these look useful. We have a desk. It's the chief's secretary's desk. She's keeping a diary. What does she have to say about the chief? April 6th. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off, screaming at me never to touch the statue again. If it's so important, maybe he shouldn't have put it out in the open like that. Okay, so the secretary accidentally moved one of the statues in that one puzzle with the statue that was holding the red gem. And the chief got real mad. Don't move those statues. That would You don't want to accidentally solve the puzzle. April 7th, I heard that all the art pieces from the Chief's collection are rare items, literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know which is the bigger mystery, where he finds those tacky things, or where he's getting the money to pay for them. Yes, yeah, see? There's a story reason for why the police station is so ridiculous. Someone's pumping money to the Chief, and he's spending it on artwork, because that's what he's into. May 10th. I wasn't surprised to see the chief come in today with yet another large picture frame in his hands. This time was a really disturbing painting depicting a nude person being hanged. I was appalled by the expression on the chief's face as he leered at that painting. Why anyone would consider something like that to be a work of art is beyond my comprehension. I mean, it sounds like that's an HR violation, but it seems like that would be a difficult thing to actually, you know, get the chief to uh, abide by. Like, if the police chief wants to do that kind of thing, who's going to stop him, really? Internal affairs? They answer to the chief. Oh, hello. Here's a... This is from the attract mode. You see? Here's the on-fire zombie. He is on fire and doesn't seem to feel it.
There we go. Right, so this hallway is on fire. There's a helicopter that has crashed through the wall. We probably should do something about that. Uh, for right now, I think I want to unlock that. I'm thinking about, do we want to go down here yet? We might as well. Let's head down here. It's another way back down to the first floor. And it takes us into one of the officer's offices. I mean, he doesn't need these anymore, so I guess we'll take them. All right. Here, bunch of officers, uh, yeah, walking around in here. Gonna shoot them. They're moaning and groaning, so we do what we do. There we go. So here's a safe. Earlier on, we got a note saying what a, com a combination for this safe. Might as well enter it. There we go. All right, so acid rounds for the grenade launcher. Makes sense. Those would be kept away in a safe and not just like in a desk somewhere. Here's a map. Let's take it. You'd think there would have been more in that safe, but no. Let's see. Is there anything back here? Yeah, there are, her there are herbs. Uh, don't want to fill up my inventory, though. I probably don't need that. Oh, hello. Didn't I? Sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't mean to forget anyone. Don't want anyone to feel left out. I don't think. I don't know if there's anything here for us to look at. Like, there's that one zombie over there on the floor. I mean, we could shoot him, but there's no reason to. There's an ink ribbon. Don't really need that. Anything for us to look at? It's like books, files, not getting a description on anything. Any files around? Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, let's go through here. We go through here and we find that there's a big party happening out here. One, two, three. There's more than that. Yes, yeah, four, five. So, in Resident Evil 1, it was never the case that there were this many zombies on the screen. So, it's a surprise the first time you see this. However, if you played Resident Evil 1, then you know that acid rounds are really powerful. Especially against living things. Zombies are not living things, but it'll work anyway. Don't worry about it. There we go. They're all dead now. I don't need to go down that hallway, though, do I? I don't think I... No, I don't. I don't. What I need to do is go down here. This is one of the doors in the, the lobby that we unlocked before. Um, what I want to do is go back down the way we came. Let's just head down here. Right, before I passed by a door, because I didn't need to go in here. Let's go in here now. Alright, what do we find? We find a meeting room. And an operation report. Operation report, September 26th. The Raccoon Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. I should hope it's unexpected. That would be... I mean, imagine that if you get attacked by zombies and you think, Well, I expected this. What did I think was going to happen? Most of the time, zombie attacks are unexpected. Many have been injured. Even more were killed. During the attack, our communications equipment was destroyed, and we no longer have contact with the outside, aside from that one phone line in the star's office, which is connected to a fax machine. But no one's actually going to use that, I guess. We have decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors, as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading beyond Raccoon City. The details of the operation are as follows. 
security of armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies attack, he made the decision to relocate all weapons to scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all ammunition caches. It has become our top priority to recover these scattered munitions. See? A story reason for why there are weapons and ammo scattered all over the building. Why did I open that one drawer before and there were grenades in it? Grenade rounds? Because the weapons were scattered by the chief who said, Oh no, terrorism. Remember that one guy? With the bomb? Like, th he got away. Maybe he's a terrorist. We need to scatter all the weapons and ammo all along the building so no one could actually get to them? Like, I don't know. If there was an intruder in the police station, they wouldn't be able to get all the weapons. That chief, he's thinking ahead. To unlock the weapon storage, as stated earlier, it will be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However... A considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the keycard used to access the weapon storage is missing, and we have been unable to locate the key. One of the breakers went down during the battle, and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas. It has become first priority to restore the power in the power room and secure those locks. Recorder, David Ford. Okay, so the person with the keycard for the biggest ammunition cache is, um... It's not they don't know where he is operation report september 27th 1 p.m the west barricade has been broken through and another exchange ensued we sheltered the injured in the conf confiscation room on the first floor temporarily 12 more people were injured in the battle recorder david ford additional report three additional people were killed following the sudden appearances and as a, a, a and as of yet unknown creature this creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. However, its most distinguishing characteristic is its lance-like tongue, capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their numbers as well as their location remains unknown. We have tentatively named this creature the Licker, and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. The countermeasures just kind of shoot it a lot. It Just shoot it. It'll be fine. Okay, so everyone's dying, the liquor has appeared and is killing more people, they still can't find the weapons. So, things were going badly, real fast. It looks like there was a recent accident here, I mean you could describe that for the entire police station probably. It looks like an operation map. Let's go in the back room. We want to go into- actually there's something here. Yeah, in the U.S. version, there was, like, a hidden item back here, but I don't think it's in this version. Some hidden items are not here, and it seems like some of them are. Anyway, the secretary mentioned that the chief brought in a hideous painting. Here it is. The title is, A Sacrifice to the Hellfire. Hmm. Fire, you say? We have a lighter, you say? All right, so the chief brought this in so he could hide another red gem in it. The Virgin Heart? Was it called that before? I don't remember it ever being called that. I just remember it always being called the Red Gem. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen the name Virgin Heart, but that's what it's being called right now, in this version anyway. Anything? I don't think there's anything else here. Yeah, empty soda cans and junk, nothing else. Here's a vending machine with the earth on it. I don't know what kind of soda that is. It's like a black can above the earth. Is that like supposed to be like the monolith from 2001, except it's soda? Because I would be into that gimmick. I'd be into that idea. Give me the wisdom of the ages through soda. Okay, we have the second red gem. So what I'm going to do is go back the way I came. Because that was the reason that I came here. Was to get that second gem. Might as well pick up this herb while I'm here. I think 
I can put away my lighter for right now. I think that'll be fine. I also think I'll probably want to take out an ink ribbon. Because I think that we have one more thing to do today, and that's use these two red gems that we just found. And then I think we'll probably save our game for right now. Won't take too long to get back to where we were. We want to go up to the fiery hallway, remember. Actually, yeah, that's right. That hallway is on fire. We have to put that out, don't we? We would, ha yeah, because that's in our way. We can't do anything before. Do I have enough space? Yeah, I have space in my inventory. Should be fine. Can't do anything as long as the hallway is on fire. It's the first priority you put to put out that fire. Anyway, here's some birds. They're gnawing on this guy. He's been pecked to death. Ah. The birds are no problem, really. We just run away. That's fine. It's fine. It would be more it would be more of a pain if we actually tried to fight them. This thing is on fire. However, there it's an exit to the police station right here. Is this worth investigating? After all, we are trying to find a way out of here. Except there's like a whole lot more zombies, so. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's... It's it's fine. Here's this room. Here are two items we need. Here's a valve handle. We'll take it. Here's a bow gun. Yeah, that's like what our, our friend in the gun store had. We will take that as well. I can open close the valves with this. Powerful bow gun, primarily used to hunt large game. Didn't work out too well for our gun store friend. But maybe it'll do better for us. We could also try to leave the police station by going through this door. What could stop us? That's a fun one. Because in Resident Evil 1, they never do that. There was no point in the game where they ambushed you with monsters when you opened the door. So, like, when you play this game and then you get to that, it's startling. Oop. Because you don't actually expect that the game is going to do that. Hold on, let me herb up. There we go. So that's a kind of a neat thing. Like, you think you're going to go through that door and explore a new area, but no, you are not. You're going to get zombied. You can't go through the door, even if you kill the zombies, by the way. Here's a water pressure valve. It reads, blow up the, wa the water tank by shutting off the valve, I guess. We'll do that. This always kind of confused me. Let's keep turning this until... Okay, we ruptured the water tank. That seems like a design flaw. I mean, we needed it to put, the put out the fire. So we did that. We still have the valve handle, though, because we are going to need it later on. Not for a while, but eventually. The helicopter is a complete wreck. There is nothing in the cockpit, though in the US version of the game, I do think there was, there was a box of bullets, if I remember that right. All right, we put the fire out. So that helicopter that crashed through the hallway has now been extinguished. However, we can't actually go down here because it's kind of like been busted. There's no choice but to take out the wall. How do we expect to do that? I don't know how Claire expects to do it. However, we kind of have a reason to because we heard someone scream, but we can't get through there. We have to find a way through there to see who was screaming and help them out. But this door will not lead that way. 
This door leads to a very artsy room. Kind of looks like art storage. Like, I guess the chief is buying all this art with the money he is getting. Oh, hold on. Okay, we got another key. That's good. It is in the shape of a diamond. Diamond key. So the chief is buying all this art, including... Tyrannos the Brave, who revives with two lights. And, like, there are these two things on either side. It's a woman relief. There's a hole about the size of the fist. We have a gem that's the size of a fist. And I realized I didn't get the second one from my box. It's still in there. I should go back and get it. So I can put it in the other one. Because we need two gems. We got two gems this time round. We got one from that one statue, and we got one from the painting. So let me just go here and get this... Uh, I can, I'll put the valve away for right now, replace it with gem. Go back down here. In down here, over here, and use this. All right, Tyran Tyrannos the Brave revived. And by revive, they mean open, open, opening up his chest, in which he has a blue stone, a little bit anticlimactic. That's all that's in there. It's half a, half a block. We got a full block before from the library puzzle, but Tyrannos is only giving us half a block. Nothing inside. We're going to leave our red gems. We can't take them. This chief, wasting so much money on all this fine art that he's using for puzzles to hide keys and such. Anyway, for right now, I think that we're going to go back in here and we are going to save our game. Because there's a typewriter right here. Take the ink ribbon. Let's use the old typewriter. Yes, we will. Create new. There we go. Claire A02. Um, so... You know, at this point in the game, I think that maybe it's a little bit confusing as to what it is we're trying to do. Um, basically, we don't have much of a goal. Claire's original goal was to find Chris. She found the star's office. Chris went to Europe. He didn't tell her. So, we're not going to find Chris in this game. In a future game, yeah, but not in this one. So, Claire doesn't really have a mission anymore. Her only mission now is to get out of the, the city and survive. So all we've been really doing is running around the police station, trying to find weapons and ammo, and try to open more doors to find an escape. Um, and there hasn't really been a whole lot of direction as far as that goes. We know from one of the police files that there is an exit down in the sewers, and that some of the cops were going to try to go down there and hopefully not encounter any monsters. Uh, there are indeed monsters down there. So I suppose that's our direction. We're trying to find a way down into the sewers. And to do that, we have to explore the entire police station, find all of the scattered weapons and such, all of the scattered keys, which are hidden in puzzles made out of fine art. Uh, so that's basically the stage that we're in right now. Though it is a little bit difficult to say when you don't know where it is that you're going. You're just sort of, you know, exploring the map right now. Exploring all the rooms. Trying to open up the rooms. And right now, I guess our immediate goal is that one door that we heard someone scream behind. The helicopter smashed it so we can't go through it. But we heard someone scream. We need to go help that person. So we have to find a way to take out the wall. And uh, as far as that goes, we do have this diamond key. So we'll be making uh, use of that next time as we continue to explore the Raccoon City Police Station as Claire Redfield in Resident Evil 2. I'll see you next time for more.